Hey guys, it's Carl, and right now in the tech scene, there's a bit of a lull, a bit of a low period in new stuff coming out, so there's no better time to chat through some rumor mills, and obviously one of the biggest releases coming every year is the new iPhone line, and the current iPhone 13 line is eight months old, and the new iPhone 14 line, we've just had some really cool leaks of what's coming up next, especially around the design, and it's actually a bit of a divergence in what we're going to be getting. So typically every year we have the 13 and 13 Pro, or the regular iPhone and the Pro versions. That has been no different this year. The 13 Pro Max, which I usually use as my daily driver, and I always pick the Max models for the battery life, and to this day, no phone has beaten the 13 Pro Max in battery life. This thing is the king of the hill in terms of smartphone battery. Then we have the standard 13. For some reason, I've got my 12 here. And the Mini. We'll start off with the small guy first. The 14 Mini sadly will no longer be around. So the 13 mini, this is, I guess, your last time to buy it. And if they choose to discontinue the 13, which might be a possibility, because you'll see later on, there won't really be much of a difference between the 13 and the 14. Try to snag the 13 mini while you still can, especially with the new green colorway. I know that's their special limited edition one. I will be a sad person when this is no longer around. I know that the minis have a bit of a cult following. People seem to love the size, the form factor. The one thing that I just can't stand behind is the battery life, which is the worst amongst the 13 line just because it's a smaller phone. And like I said, that's the reason why I go to the 13 Pro Max, just so I can have something that lasts me the entire day. Obviously I'm on it for my job most of the day. So to me, that makes sense. So the mini, RIP to the 14 mini, snag the 13 or even the 12 mini if you can still get it on a discount. And going towards the 14 and the 14 Pro. So in terms of sizing, we will see a 14, the regular size, as well as a 14 Max, which will technically be a new model that will have a similar form factor to the 14 Pro, just like how we have the 13 Pro Max right now. The 14 and 14 Pro will have a 6.1 inch display, whereas the Max models will have a 6.7 inch display. All of them will be OLED, but the difference between the display tech, the Pro models will have ProMotion. So that's that 120 Hertz refresh rate, the standard 14s, unfortunately, from what we're seeing, will still be stuck to 60. And that's kind of the next divergence is the features that differentiate between the regular iPhone model and the Pro model. It's that extra couple hundred dollars that make you wonder if the Pro is worth the upgrade. So the first difference is the actual materials that the phones are made of right now. So all of the Pro models have that stainless steel banding, and I get that most people wear their wear their phones, rock their phones with cases so you typically don't feel that. I am one of those strange people that likes to live on the edge and rocks their phones naked. So I do feel that premium difference. And on the back for the glass, it's in a matte finish compared to the glossy finish of the standard 13 line. The second visual indicator is mostly the colors. And once again, most of you rock cases, but uh, if you are wondering, the pro models tend to have pro colors is space gray, silver slash stainless steel, uh, gold, is that a pro color? Obviously the Sierra blue, which I'm a fan of, or the new green. Um, whereas the standard 13 line, it's a bit more playful, they're a bit more bold, but once again, I don't think the colors or material should influence your decision. The next indicator that most people see, and I think it's the true telltale, is the camera system. So on the back of the pro models, you have the three sensors. So the extra one that the pro has is is the telephoto. To be honest, it's the sensor that I use the least. If you look through my photo album, maybe one out of every four, 500 photos is a telephoto shot. It also has the extra LiDAR sensor. So if you are someone that shoots a lot of augmented reality or does a ton of work in that field, that could sway you in the direction of the Pro model. And this does shoot in Apple RAW. So it's that extra file format for Pro users and we'll still see that moving forward into the 14 line. In terms of the rest of the design, they're pretty much identical. The same buttons around the outsides. They both unfortunately still have lightning. For the 14 models, we haven't had confirmed reports of the actual port choice. I am praying for USB-C, maybe like they have on the iPad Pro lines. Those have USB-C and I can only hope the Pro iPhone 14s will have it. I will keep my fingers crossed for that. 
Internally right now, both the 13 and 13 Pro models have the A15 Bionic, and the biggest difference I would say is the Pro Motion over on the Pro models. That's that higher refresh rate. That's what gives the Pro phones a faster feel. Theoretically, they have the exact same benchmarks, but moving forward to the 14 and 14 Pro line, I think this is the biggest bomb drop the 14s will have the same chip, the A15 Bionic, as the current gen, whereas the 14 Pro models will have the new A16 Bionic chip. And this will be the first time that Apple comes out with a flagship device, something completely new that still has the same chipset, the same silicon as a year before. And it'll be interesting to see how Apple spins this, actually MKBHD made an entire video on this. It didn't inspire me. I actually wanted to create this video on my own anyways, but he made a really good point. When it comes to the keynote, what will Tim Cook say when they come out with the final pricing? More on that in a second. When they come out with the final specs and they put all the models together, there would be an awkward silence if people were actually allowed to attend. Maybe they will be this year. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I remember when the Pro Display XDR stand came. That was at the last keynote that I attended from Apple before this entire world pandemic. When they announced the display stand was gonna cost $1,000, even every single diehard Apple fan that claps at everything Apple. It will be $49.99 for the display itself. <laughs> and the Pro Stand, $9.99. And like the Mac Pro, they'll all be available in the, in the fall. Did I stutter? And I think Twitter will explode. I think a lot of uh, techies will have a bit of a field day when they announce a new iPhone will have an old chip. There are a couple of reports though that even though the iPhone 14 will still use the older chipset, they at least will have two gigs extra of RAM. So it should be up to speed with the new A16 Bionic. And to be very honest, in the defense of Apple, in the defense of the average person that buys an iPhone, if I were to toss someone an iPhone 13, an iPhone 12, say for example, this one, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference in speed. The biggest difference between the Pro models to the standard ones, I mentioned that it's the ProMotion, that 120 Hertz display, it makes it seem quicker, but even the standard 12 to the 13, if you had both models side by side, if you use them for your regular day stuff, so um, scrolling through the endless loop of social media, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you use, sending a couple texts, making phone calls, uh, typing out your emails, playing the occasional game, performance is so, so close, and Apple actually does a really good job at supporting older devices. You typically don't have to make an upgrade in three to four, maybe even five years. Can you blame Apple for throwing an already really good chip into a new phone? And I know another big reason might be the chip shortage crisis. Every industry is suffering from that right now. Even the Titan of Apple is not immune to that effect. So maybe that's another reason to keep an older SOC inside of the new iPhones and possibly this is what I'm really hoping for. It all depends on pricing. So right now we'll throw a display up or throw a little picture up of what the current iPhones start at. 699 for the standard iPhone 13, 999 for the iPhone 13 Pro. If we can get that same pricing for the 14 line, I'd be in a pretty happy place because everything that you look at right now is increasing in price. Inflation is running amok. Every thing that you look at is more expensive. My new car, which is currently on order and coming shortly, I'll save the full reveal for that, 30% more expensive. My Twizzlers off to the side, I just snagged these today. I used to buy these pre-pandemic, $2.99 for a pack, I paid $3.99, so a buck more, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a 30-ish percent increase for licorice. Everything is more expensive, and if Apple, can keep the same price for their iPhones, I would be pretty happy. I think it all comes down to the price point. I'm truly praying for that, and especially for everyone else that buys their phones, I can only hope that we see the exact same pricing structure. The last things to kind of round out the rumor mill, I'm just kind of looking at it right now. So for the 14 Pro cameras, like I said, you've got the three sensors, but now expect to see the main camera have a 48 megapixel main instead of the 12 megapixel on the standard 14 and 14 Max. 
that will just get you better resolution for your photos and maybe even more importantly, better video resolution, even though I still think the 13 and 13 Pro has the best smartphone video capabilities out of anything that's come out. Maybe for photos, the Pixel 6 Pro competes, but um, iPhone video just looks so damn good. Uh, even right now, nothing does come close. That is pretty much it. Um, obviously, you're gonna look at the leaks and say, yeah, the notch on the 14 Pro has become thinner. It has, according to what we're seeing from some of these camera cutouts. Is it really getting rid of the notch? Not exactly. I guess the notch is technically slimming down. It's becoming more of a hole punch cutout. Android phones have had those forever. You get maybe, what, 15, 20 extra pixels around the area. Will they be usable? Probably not. You'll just see text and info scrolling past them. You will never actually look into that small little area and find that um, of any use. But anyways, that is pretty much what we are seeing in the next gen iPhones, the 14, 14 Pro. Remember, RIP to the 14 mini, snag that while you can. My true wishes would honestly just be USB-C and that Frankenstein phone that I mentioned in my iPhone SE video. If we could get a 14 Pro Max, with some sort of touch ID, I would uh, bless the gods, but uh, don't expect to see that. We'll still have the standard, I guess, entry-level iPhone SE at the very end of the budget spectrum, going all the way up to the 14 Pro Max as the most expensive. So maybe the next thing that I'm wondering, the exclusive color, I am praying for an orange iPhone. I've been waiting for it uh, since Apple has come out with uh, some of the new colorways, but I guess we will wait and see until the full reveal. Let me know what you guys think about the next gen iPhone in the comments below. And what do you think about Apple coming out with the iPhone 14 with the A15 Bionic with what we see right now? Is that a shit show waiting to happen? Will Tim Cook get booed off the imaginary stage or just get destroyed on Twitter? We'll have to wait and see. We'll catch you guys in one of my next vids. Peace.